Fred and George obviously should have noticed Peter Pettigrew on the Marauders map. Like, don't you think they would have asked their brother about the other man or boy in bed with him at night? Or how the Triwizard Tournament wasn't really that much of a spectator sport? Like, the dragons, yes, maybe, but the other two tasks were immediately going underwater or into a maze. What was there to see? Gosh, Harry, the way you entered and exited the water was just riddled with moral fiber. Ten points to your house if you got that reference. Or even how almost fortunate it was that the very thing guarding the diary was a basilisk. Sure, if you look it in the eyes, it can kill you. It seems like a perfectly good, extremely dangerous beast to guard a super valuable object, but how long did it take for our heroes to figure out how to destroy a horcrux? And one of the very few known ways to do so was with basilisk venom. Kinda seems like guarding a fire with buckets of water, if you ask me. But there's one thing I have always been so curious about, and that is whether or not Professor Quirrell was a horcrux. Let's think about it. We know that each Horcrux is a piece of Voldemort's soul. We have the diary, the ring, the locket, the diadem, the cup, Harry, Nagini, and Voldemort himself. This is where things get kind of tricky. A Horcrux is more of a vessel that holds a piece of soul, but the very consciousness of that soul resides with the creator. You know, I always kind of wondered which Horcrux the consciousness would shift to if the creator himself died. I feel like the diary, it had a lot of spunk. But here's where things get weird, because after Voldemort tried to kill Harry, his consciousness didn't shift to one of his other Horcruxes. The creator, that piece of soul's vessel, his actual human body was destroyed, but that piece of soul just continued to wander around looking for a new vessel. Which brings us back to our original question. Was Professor Quirrell a Horcrux? I mean, on the one hand, his human body is serving as a vessel for a piece of Voldemort's soul, and we see that Quirrell no longer has control over his own actions. Or at the very least, was not strong enough to override Voldemort's decisions even if he tried. That does seem to kind of fit the definition, but it also seems like maybe Voldemort is just possessing his body. So it brings us back to another question of, how do you actually create a Horcrux? Now, JK Rowling has stated that she knows exactly how to create a Horcrux, but is not willing to let us in on that. We know that it takes committing an act of murder and a highly advanced spell. And therein lies kind of the issue with whether or not Quirrell could be a Horcrux, because at the time that Voldemort takes over his body, he would be far too weak to either commit an act of murder or perform this highly advanced spell. At the time, he was literally occupying the bodies of rats and snakes, and does, does that mean that all of those were Horcruxes too? Gosh, how many of these things did he have? You know what? Nope, we, we just can't. We can't possibly keep track of every rodent and reptile that became a vessel. We can't do it. Eight. There were eight. The ring, diary, locket, diadem, cup, snake, Harry, and the creator. Except, again, in order to complete the process of creating a Horcrux, you had to actually cast a spell. And obviously he didn't stash a piece of soul in Harry on purpose. He didn't even know he had done it. So wait. Does that mean that Harry wasn't a Horcrux? Are we back to seven? I, I just, I have to look this up now. Okay, so Horcrux comes from the old English words whore and crux, with whore meaning evil and crux meaning container. So the word literally means container for evil. Okay, you know what? This is where we just need to start making a distinction on this clearly highly complex topic. In general, we all seem to think of a Horcrux in the same way as the creation of a Horcrux, but that is not really the case. The creation of a Horcrux is really the decision to split one's soul. And that is the part of the process that is highly difficult to accomplish. On the other hand though, the soul seems to be able to travel between vessels with relative ease as long as it's the piece of soul that contains the consciousness 
of the creator. So when Quarrel became a container, it wasn't through that complex process of Voldemort once again splitting his soul, but instead that piece of already split soul occupying a new vessel, which was Quarrel's body. So to finally answer this question, yes, at one point in time, he was a container of evil. Therefore, he was a Horcrux, much the same way Harry was. It's just important to note that Quirrell was not a ninth piece of soul. I think that's really the key distinction. When Harry killed Quirrell at age 11, he wasn't really destroying a Horcrux. Sensing danger, the piece of soul inside of Quirrell left at the very last second, and effectively, Harry just destroyed an empty vessel. Although, wow, they really do just kind of gloss over the fact that 11-year-old Harry kills a full-grown man. I guess it was mostly Voldemort, but still. So to answer our question, yes, we do believe that Professor Quirrell was in fact a Horcrux. For my question of the day, what do you guys think? Do you agree? And was there anything else that could have also been a Horcrux? Be sure to leave your thoughts in the towel section down below. This video is brought to you by all of our Super Carlin friends over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel too, head on over to patreon.com backslash Super Carlin Brothers to see all of our fun supporter perks, including my favorite for a single dollar giraffe insurance. Guys, as always, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to see more Harry Potter action from us, you can click right here to find out whether or not Dumbledore created 